this video, we're going to take a look at rendering in Substance Painter 2. So we've integrated the iRay renderer within the Substance Painter viewport. And if you're familiar with iRay and Substance Designer, then the implementation in Substance Painter is going to work the same way. So to start working with iRay, what we're going to do is just come over to our viewport and we can choose the render iRay viewport. So when I select this, Substance Painter then goes into this full screen rendering and post process mode. Here in the center, you see the rendered image. And then here on the right, we have our settings. Now notice here we have our display settings as I covered in a previous video. So here again, you'll see that we have our aperture, our focus distance and field of view, and we can also enable post effects on top of our render. And we'll discuss this a bit later. Here in our viewer settings, you can see that we have the ability to choose different environment maps. We have uh, easy access to our exposure and environment rotation. Here we also have uh, the ability to change shaders as well as work with the MDL parameters. So here you'll notice that I have the PBR Metal Rough shader selected and with this I have some options here for emissive intensity and this project is using some emissive maps so I can increase my emissive intensity which you can see here in these emissive areas. Now we don't see any bloom or anything like that yet because we haven't enabled our post process. So the way this works is that here in the viewport, we have iRay processing the rendering. And then on top of that, Yebis is used to provide post effects. Now, moving down towards the bottom here, you can see that we have the specific iRay settings. And rendering within Substance Painter is actually quite easy. First, I want to bring your attention here to this override viewport resolution. So right now I have this enabled. Let me just disable this. And here you can see that the viewport maximizes to the full area of the viewport. Now what you can do is set a specific pixel width and height. So let's say that you needed to render a very high resolution image, like maybe a 4000 by 4000. You can set this here and then check the override viewport resolution. In my case, I'm just setting this to 1K and I'm going to enable the um, override viewport resolution. And now you can see that the viewport rendering area conforms itself to the resolution that I've set here. Now here in the iRay rendering settings, is where we can set the quality. So notice here that this render that I have thus far looks very noisy, and that has to do with the settings that I have. The way iRay works is that it progressively renders the image based on an allotted time that you have set, and that's indicated here by this max time. Notice here that I have 10 seconds set. That means that iRay is going to process or refine the image for no more than 10 seconds. Now we have this min samples and max samples and this minimum samples section may actually be gone in the final release of Substance Painter 2 just to further simplify the process because what really matters here is the time that we set for iRay to refine. But for this tutorial, I'll go ahead and explain it now. So for instance, we have a setting here of 10 seconds and we have a minimum samples of one. And if we look here in the iRay info, you can see that we have iterations. And the iteration says 6 over 1,000. So 1,000 here is my max samples. Notice here is my 1,000, and you can see that here. So this is my max samples. So the first number is your min, and the second number is your max. So notice here that I have this set to minimum samples is at 1, but I'm actually getting 6. And that's because iRay, again, puts more emphasis on the time setting. And this is probably why you won't see this minimum samples when Substance Painter 2 officially launches. So what iRay is doing with these settings right now is it's going to render for 10 seconds. Within 10 seconds, I was able to get six samples for this image. So if I set this uh, max time, let's set this down to uh, one. So I'm looking at one second and one sample. And then here I'm just going to uh, just kind of rotate my viewport. And so now you can see when finished, Iterations is at one, so I got one sample within one second. So by setting the max time very low like this, I'm, I'm basically setting up like a preview render, and that's good if I want to be able to adjust maybe you know my field of view or some of my environment settings and so on, and not have to wait on you know a full render to process. Now let's come back to our max time, and let's say that uh, here I'm going to edit this, and let's say that I put this at 60. So 60 seconds, one minute. I'm basically saying to iRay, I want you to progressively refine this image for up to one minute. And so here you can see that as it's running, 
the iterations, the minimum samples are counting here for me. So here's 10, 11, it's just continuing to refine. And it's gonna do this all the way up to 60. And you can already start to see that some of the noise is going away. So basically, in order to set the final quality, you just set a time and you let it go and you know maybe you set it to three or four minutes if you want or two minutes and you see how refined the image can be within that time. Now notice here we finished, so we've gone 60 seconds and our iterations we got 65 samples. So this is what the image looks like with 65 minimum samples. Now here in our max samples, let's say that we set our max time very, very high. This max samples is going to then kick in. So let's say that we set this to like 30 minutes or something, but iRay is able to hit this maximum number of samples within say 10 minutes. Then iRay is going to finish at that point. So either the max time is hit or the max samples is hit. So now let's go back and take a look at some more of these viewer settings. So I basically want to set iRay into a preview render mode. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my uh, max time and uh, I'll just set it here at uh, let's say one second. And here I can just move my viewport. The viewport navigation works the exact same uh, as when you're in the real time viewport. And so there we go, just let iRay kind of kick in for a second. And uh, I'm just kind of focusing on the uh, kind of this bottom area here. So let me just move this up and let's come over and take a look again at some additional viewer settings. Now here we have this dome option. So I'm gonna roll this down and let's take a look at what we have. So the dome type allows us to change the environment. So here I have sphere with ground and what this is doing is, uh, well, it has a sphere in my scene and then it has basically a ground polygon and the environment texture is being mapped to this. So it gives me the appearance of having a ground. We can change this to infinite sphere, which is just a sphere that has our environment map to it. Now, these controls for radius and texture scale, they are only available in certain modes. So for instance, if we come over here to sphere, I can now adjust my radius and my texture scale. Same thing with sphere with ground. We can now adjust our radius and texture scale. So by reducing this texture scale, you can see that the ground looks a bit more appropriate for the scale of the character. However, you can see where we're starting to get kind of this stretching here in the background. So here, I'm just gonna leave this on infinite sphere. Now, we also have this option for ground. Now, notice here that with the uh, with this character, and later, let me just rotate the viewport, we're, we're seeing this kind of shadow here that's being uh, captured. And that's because we have this ground. So this is like a shadow casting ground plane. So if I turn this off, we no longer get the shadow. And so here I'll go back and enable this and we have controls for you know the shadow intensity as well as glossiness and reflection. So right now there's no reflectivity. If I wanted to add some reflectivity to this uh, ground plane, I could uh, increase the reflective value and then adjust the glossiness appropriately. Now right now we're not really going to see much because our max time is canceling the rendering before we get enough samples to really see what's going on. But again, you can see the benefit of keeping this at a low value so that we can make some changes pretty quickly without having to wait for, you know, a very long render. So that covers the basics of our environment settings here. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of change uh, kind of my angle and just maybe set up uh, a shot here that I might want to render. And as I mentioned in a previous video, iRay is rendering physical depth of field. And so in order to actually see this work, I need to adjust my aperture. So here I'm increasing the aperture value and we start to see some blurring taking place. So here, let's just uh, increase it to something, you know, fairly extreme. And so here you can see that, you know, the image is pretty much completely blurred out. Now I need to set my focus distance. And a really good way to do that is just interactively here in the viewport. So I can hold down the control key and middle click on an area to set that fo focus distance. So here I'm gonna try to set it around this cheek area. So control, middle click, sets the focus. Now you can do this with Yebis as well. So if you've activated post effects and you wanna override iRay's depth of field, you can use this control middle click option as well. And so just like that, I was able to quickly just set up kind of my depth of field uh, for rendering with iRay. 
So now we're going to look at doing a full render with our post effects. So before I set up my settings, uh, here let me just expand this, before I set up uh, the settings that I'm going to use, uh, we're going to activate our post effects. We want to have our post effects set before we start our IRA render. Once the IRA render is completed, we can then tweak our post effects in real time over top of the finished render. But if we enable it after we finish render, it's going to actually trigger another IRA render, and we don't want to wait for that again. So uh, here for our samples, uh, so here for our max time, uh, let's just set this to uh, 120. And so now IRA is beginning the refinement process here of our image, and uh, I'm just going to let this uh, cook for a while, and I'll come back once this is finished. Okay, so the render is finished, and we can see in the iterations that I got 48 samples uh, for this two-minute mark. And I'm looking at the render, and I'm seeing, uh, well, I still have some noise where a lot of this depth of field is pretty extreme. So what I'd like to do is continue this refinement process. Now, what's really awesome about iRay is that, you know, I don't have to trigger a new render. So in other rendering applications, I would see this and go, oh, well, it's not good enough. Uh, let me fire another render, and I start over from scratch. Well, with iRay, I can come in, and I can just adjust my max time. So this time, I'm going to go to five minutes, so let's do 300 seconds. And uh, so now that I have this set, iRay starts running again. And notice that my iterations, we started uh, you know, pretty much right where we left off. We're at 50 samples, and iRay is going to continue this refinement process. And you can see that now we're at 213, and we're moving forward. So I don't have to start over. Uh, you know, iRay is going to pick up where it left off and continue on. What's really great about this solution here within Painter is that you, know, you don't have to be this rendering guru. You don't have to know all these advanced rendering parameters. You don't have a bunch of settings to check. Uh, you just essentially you know, fire off the render, and you let it go until it looks good, and that's it. You're done. OK, so we're back, and you can see that we've hit our uh, five-minute rendering time, and we ended up with 123 samples. Uh, this refined uh, this depth of field area a, a bit more. And I think it's good enough here for you know this tutorial. So here we have our render complete. Uh, we can now come over here to our post effects and start to make some changes as well and do some tone mapping and color correction. So let's come over here to our glare. And I can decrease and increase our glare. Actually, I'm going to come over here to my vignette. And here I'm going to add a bit more strength to this vignetting and just adjust my glare. And now I'm going to take a look at uh, my tone mapping here. So now that I've added some post effects and I've color graded my image, I'm ready to save it. So here under iRay settings, I can click this save render button and just browse to a location and save it. And we support a wide range of image formats you can save too. So there's one last thing that I want to point out, and that is if we come over to Edit Settings here under General, you'll see that we have some iRay preferences. And I just wanted to stress that you don't actually have to have NVIDIA hardware for this to work. So if you're on a machine that uses AMD, the iRay hardware will default to the CPU. So that's going to cover things here for the rendering options in Substance Painter 2. And as you can see, the iRay integration here within Substance Painter 2 provides a very fast, efficient, and high-quality for you to render images without having to go to other software.